Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the finest Dawn of War, Soulstorm casts this side of East Yorkshire. And so we've got a one versus one on Emerald River. Over in the Imperial Guard corner, we've got Absent 70. Or it's over on the other side of the map, we've got Q-Door as the Necrons. Necrons are going to go for Quadruple Builder Scabs, Double Necron Warriors, and Necron Lord, as well as Quadruple Plasma Generators. Reporting Whereas Imperial this. Guard are going to go for Triple Guardsman, Tech Priest Engine Seer, and a Plasma Generator. So about two weeks ago, we saw Absent 70 go up against a different Necron player, if my memory serves me correctly. And he, he won from a really unusual game, but the win was a win. So we shall have to see if he's able to keep up his Necron win streak, or Reporting games this. against Necron win streak, shall we say. It's a weird map for the Imperial Guard. There's, what, a strategic point here, here, and here, which is... Not, not exactly what you want to see, really, for the Imperial Guard. It's quite quite a spaced out uh, space they've got to really um, defend. It'd be different if there was just, like, one here and then maybe a couple here. You'd be able to keep on point with them quite easily as a defensive faction. But, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll have to see how, how it goes. Necrons probably won't be pushing out too early, I'd imagine. Just focusing on their usual plasma generators and whatnot. Are going to go for this distant strategic point early, just for defensive purposes, I'm absolutely sure. Lots of negative cover on this map, but then again, there was also lots of big wide open spaces that the Imperial Guard can take advantage of. Normally, that might be a disadvantage for the Imperial Guard, a big wide open map, but against these slow maneuvering forces of the Necrons, I reckon it will be a fairly decent decent space for them. Summoning caught on the way for the Necrons as some warriors are on their way out. Going to be seeing what they can see. As you wish. No commander yet at the moment. Just saving, just saving his money for... Oh, I imagine he'll be saving his money to build up all these listing posts. And once they start building up, then he'll then feel confident to get some HQ units out. Maybe even potentially saving his money so he can upgrade them into Tier 2 listing posts. So uh, if there's any counter-offensives or strikes or whatever from wraiths and whatnot, they'll be able to defend them a little bit easier. Scabs are going to go over here to this relic, whereas the Imperial Guard are going to be doing the same over yonder. No major aggressive plays at the moment from either player. As we said, it is quite a wide map, so both players just concentrating on getting all their strategic points, all the little ducks in a row before they engage in some mad melee engagements. Necron's watching over the Builder Scarabs as they capture this relic. Imperial Guard standing guard on this listing post over yonder. And we now do have the command squad coming out of the infantry command. Tech Priest waiting sir. eagerly and gingerly for this nice relic to be captured. All right, men. Time to wage Necron Lord now out. Potential for maybe some perking and prodding. He is known for his ability to jump in and out of his jumping juice. Commander also moving on to the same side of the map. Going to go for a Priest as what he usually does go for. Helps him with those melee engagements, especially when he's doing some plasma generator bashing. Another Necron Warrior squad on the way out. Gonna go for a grand total of six plasma generators this early in the game. What now? Imperial Guard now moving forward. We'll see that the Necrons have captured this strategic point over here. We'll decide to chase after these Builder Scarabs and try and prevent them from capturing this critical location. While that's going on, command squad moving in. Gonna be going toe to toe of this Necron Lord. As he's supported with his Necron Warriors. But we do have two full squads. Well, I won't say two full. Two half full squads of Imperial Guard going in. Oh, and the um, Imperial Guard have gone for a really early tier two. So maybe a rush into Chimeras might be what they're thinking of. Priest almost going down. Going to turn around and see if he can tie up these Necron Warriors. But morale has been broken on this side. For all these guardsmen over here. It's weird that they've gone for a tier 2 upgrade straight away, but no grenade launches, no morale upgrades, no commissars. What? I, I, so I assume it's... it's oh, they've gone for commissars and some priests, but... No. No major tier 2 stuff at the moment. Flayed one's being teleported in. And it looks like the guardsmen are going to be in full retreat as this ghost turret is going to be set up. And this will be quite a difficult thing for the guardsmen to take care of this early on in the game. Did see some action going on down here on my mini-map. I assume some guardsmen have died. Not sure what else happened there. But I assume whatever it was, it was repelled by the... by the Necrons. 
Okay, 86 and 10. Compared to 45% build speed and 70. Tier 2 going for the Necrons. And, yeah, he's gone for, like, really early Tier 2. But none of these perks have been upgraded. And nothing major is coming from any of these buildings. We'll upgrade... Well, we'll reinforce both Guardsmen squads to have 12 men apiece. But no Sergeants, no nothing. And even with all these Guardsmen, I don't think they'll be able to push through this Ghost Turret and Necron Warriors, especially when you've got flayed ones that are ready to jump out as and when they can. Might be a case of just leaving this little area alone and trying to focus on bashing some other places that are a lot more assaultable. Guardsmen spreading out. There we go, it's going for Mechanized Command at the moment. But it's a bit of a standstill, no one wanting to move. Necro player quite comfortable just building up his economy. Gonna get Forbidden Archive as he rolls into Tier 2. Played ones making their slow march back to the Monolith for transportation purposes. Guardsmen not ready to make a push just yet. As a priest is on his way out. And yeah, we do have uh, an infantry command being popped down here. So any more guardsmen coming out from here, they can just kind of just transport themselves down this way quickly. Also helps the guardsmen from, well, for defending this area should the Necrons decide to push. Necrons are going to be building up a thermoplasma generator here. So pushing out this area is probably not what the Necrons want to do. Probably just want to chill out. Round this area, preventing the guardsmen from pushing down over this way. Priest will join them. More guardsmen being popped out down here. But no upgrades for them. Very odd. You would normally see at least a couple of grenade launchers, or at least a morale boost for them. I suppose that's what the priest's job is. Solo priest riding in. Going to be helping smash up that ghost to as quick as you like, making very, very short work of it, in fact, actually. Necrolord phase shifting out the way. Drawing some fire and attention from these guardsmen. And these Necron Warriors have not been built up any further. Oh, there we go. The Commissars are in, in the unit, so we'll be able to keep their morale up and fresh with sacrificing their units, or their models, shall I say. Chimera moving forward could be providing some fire support as these flayed ones break the morale of these guardsmen here. Necron Warriors on this side also managed to break the morale these guardsmen, but again, more Commissar shenanigans do keep these men inspired and motivated. Commander squad over here doing things. Necron Lord has died dur during some point in that engagement. Blade ones nowhere near as fast as the guardsmen. Won't be able to keep up with them, especially the ones in the Chimera. These guys do appear that they're just going to ignore anything and everything else going on and move straight into the Necron base. After that quiet spell of contemplation. Necron's going to regain the Necron Lord. Chimera just kind of chilling out here. This is not the time to chill out. It's time to move in and strike when the curse is clear. Doing a 3.1 turn. For shimmying back in. Everyone teleports back home. Which is always the difficult... Well, the difficulty of assaulting a Necron base. While the teleport is up. It's now impossible to take down a few generators when they've got loads of models on the field. One lonely priest and one lonely guardsman going up against the horrors of war by themselves. Priest getting his abdomen stabbed as he's backflipped away from the flayed one. Guardsman jumping out the Chimera, deciding to now focus down this obelisk. But now that the teleportation stuff for these guys has been spent up, it's going to take them a long, long while to get back over here. This guardsman got ample opportunity to assault this obelisk, deny the relic, and also this thermoplasma generator. 76 build speed and 10, well, 110 green money compared to 86 and 50 for the guardsman. Going for tier 3 as well. Going to go for a hellhound on top of that and the sentinel. A good mixture of vehicular combat Sentinel will be really useful in bashing this thermoplasma generator if it can stay away from any close combat shenanigans Played ones though, managing to rip and tear their way through all these guardsmen, one squad almost breaking down completely and totally 
Guardsman over here not faring any better. Not much in the way of stepping going on. Guardsman just kind of been left to engage in melee. <coughs> Necron Lord, fresh out of the oven, ready to bash anything and everything. Valkyrie Strike trying to finish off this Ferroplasma Generator. Almost gets it. One more sl slice, there we go, from the Sentinel will finish it off. And that will affect the Necron's economy quite considerably. While this is going on, we do have a slur but sure maneuver from the Necron player as warriors and immortals alike move over to bash the Guardsman's listing post. And they don't have much economy to play with, so losing any listing posts is going to be a real pain in the backside for them. Sentinel will be moving forward over on this side, but it's not going to do all that much against warriors and an immortal. First couple of volleys and the sentinel is already dead hellhounds probably work fair that much better as well Queens have been researched Cassicans as well not sure if you need birth researches on birth buildings but something to keep in mind in case one of the infantry commands do go down guardsmen are repositioning themselves to be protective over these listing posts as these next ones are kind of just chilling out over here not really doing all that much. Ah, oh, there we go. There's a little bit of life in them yet. Do you believe that the yeah the Imperial Guard can see them from the vision of their captured relic? There's a thermal plasma generator going on down here that these guys will probably want to get involved in. But they are moving up into dangerous territory. Their path of retreat being cut off if they don't have any more teleporting juice left. Bill of Scouts moving forward. Hellhounds aiming straight away at those immortals. But the Hellhounds aren't exactly the most toughest lads in the world. Will be taken up very, very quickly. Imperial Guard kind of just firing at anything and everything. Bear Plasma Generator almost going down, but doesn't seem like they'll be able to get it. John Cena being coming down, preventing all fire from these guardsmen. Necron Lord, very low on health. Doesn't quite get the phase shift in there. Although we do have some flayed ones in the mix as these Hellhounds... Now that the Immortals are dead, able to have free reign over all these Necron Warriors. And these guys, not very high on health at the moment. Air effect damage going on for these guys. Flayed ones to tidying up the Guardsmen from the backside. Killing a lot of bottles. Blood curdling on the floor. These Necron Warriors dying in droves, but their reinforcement rate is keeping them in the game. As these Guardsmen scatter from the sheer amount. We've, we've actually got triple flayed ones in the mix. Hellhound falling. Two guardsmen here just been left and forgotten. We are seeing a lot of unnecessary squad wipes from the guardsman player. Trying to rebuild that listing post, but the tech priest engines here is being pushed off. Got some Urgrins there, and they will certainly pack a punch in close combat, especially against these flayed ones once the priest Uses his God Save the Emperor ability. Blade One's moving forward. Necrons will have to move in for supporting fire. As deadly as these guys are, they won't do all that much against this layered formation of the Guardsmen. Guardsmen, we've got their morale upgrade. Really, really falling foul to the Flayed One's... Um, how would I say? Their morale damaging aura. There we go, Necron's finally moving forward. Can't see me beam being popped down there. Cassican's on the field as well. Really good choice for the Imperial Guard. Keep them around the backside while the Ogrins deal things in the front. Although engaging in this negative cover, probably not what they want. Got a destroyer on the field now. No anti-vehicle capabilities for the Imperial Guard, apart from this one singular Sentinel. It's focus firing on that destroyer there. It is certainly doing what it can. Guardsman being inspired once again. But the Commissar's way, way over here. Needs to be moving a little bit forward, more in the middle. To keep those guys fighting fit. Does also increase the overall DPS of the Guardsman, I do believe, when the Commissar surrenders one of the men's souls to the Imperial Furnace. Both destroyers on very, very low health, but neither one has been killed. Certainly tidying up these Guardsmen, as even the Ogrens are being pushed back. No... Priest left in their ranks at the moment, I, I do believe. The priest has gone down. Another guardsman squad looks like it's been taken out. 
what's going on in the base at the moment. We are going to see some more Chimeras. Anything extravagant. No, just some more destroyers. Secondary Necron Monolith, which is what you love to see. Don't see that too often in Necron games, which I don't really understand. But when, once you get that secondary monolith, you can just spam out Necron Warriors as or when you please. Guardsmen seem to be stabilising though, as the Necron push is being a bit spread out. These destroyers are going to be focusing on this listening post. Whereas these flared ones are on a bit of a solo mission. Man squad trying to sort out these flared ones with the Ogrins. Ogrins about to have the morale broken as more of their unit fall. They will be inspired by the Commissar once again. Necron Warriors firing away at this Chimera. Chimera doesn't seem to be doing all that much damage to these warriors as a another destroyer moves forward. Might need to get a whole bunch of Sentinels, maybe like a, a small pack of three, and move them in tandem, focus firing on these destroyers. I mean, triple destroyers, that's a lot of damage. Chaos Machines, but it does go on this healthy one there. Do need to see some fire going down on these guys, though, as they're being repaired by the Builder Scarabs. Sentinel, focus firing on this on these flared ones, not where you want to see those last cannons being fired. Chimera being forgotten down here. Taken out. In its prime, another Chimera also going to go down. Even though these destroyers are primarily good against infantry and heavy infantry, combined fire, focusing on these Chimeras, only 1,500 health. Will take them down. Flared one's been used to maximum effect. The Valkyrie fire goes down here. Force these guys back just for a little while. Blade One's pushing these guys all the way back to the base. And this is what I mean. So every time that the Imperial Guards push back, they do lose a listing post. Although then again, Necrons are kind of forgetting to actually kill a listing post. So the Imperial Guard economy is still really, really healthy. Although he's spending all of his money on, I assume, just like reinforcing anyone and everyone. Necrons could kind of bottleneck them in here for now while taking care of their economy. Also, all the way over here, quite a lonely island for the Necrons to assault and harass if they so chose. But they're keeping their momentum up. They're constantly firing their way into the Imperial Guard base. Doom being witnessed by these Necron warriors. Does look like they will get a squad wipe here if these Ogrins have anything to say about it. One Ogrin. Getting him on the old heavy stubber before throwing him away. Necron Lord pummeling this infantry command as there are three lots of lads in here firing outside. Another cast of machine spirit going on. Destroyer being destroyed. And it does seem like that the Imperial Guard have finally can take a moment of breath. As the only thing left really for them to worry about now is the Necron Lord. And this one singular destroyer. Sentinel back out on the field will certainly add to the woes of this destroyer. And that is a lot of dead guardsmen and a lot of dead Necrons. Listening post has been taken down, but the economy is still quite fresh for the Necrons. Uh, for the Imperial Guard. 107 and 9 compared to 76 and 149. So yeah, blue money for the Imperial Guard is still quite good, but their green money is not doing great. Only had this plasma generator and the firmer plasma generator that was taken down quite some time ago. But they've still got the Cassigans, still got the Ogrins. Do need to solve their green money problem at the moment, though, as, as these Cascans and Ogrins do require some power to be reinforced. Necron Lord hurries away. And, whoa, there we go. So, look very hairy for the Imperial Guard there. But now is the time to counter push. They have the men, they have the Chimeras, they've got their elite units, as well as a fully fledged command squad. They are tier 3, so all the hero units have got access to all their abilities. So now is the time for the push. Destroyers hang, handing, hanging around in negative cover. Command squad probably did not want to charge towards destroyers across the river as their priest and psych have been taken out almost instantly. Kazakh gets fired from a distance. Sentinel going down more or less straight away. So their ability to affect these destroyers has been massively reduced from the opening gambit. One poor Ogryn going down. This infantry command. Slim of health left. Only 40 health. Command squad going to be re remade. 
What's our economy at the moment? Yeah, still not, still not great. We have had this strategic point being denied to them. Their relic, I do believe, is their relic is still there, so it hasn't been decapped. There are some pariahs on the field, and yeah, I suppose for the Necron, from the Necron perspective, their only really worry is just to keep the guardsmen's numbers low and to keep poking, keep prodding. He says as they teleport all the way back home. Oh, but teleport back home so they can get back into the Necron monolith. That is fair of triple flayed ones, six members apiece, waiting to get their maximum seven before getting in there. And it's an honourable last stand, I have to imagine. I can't see how the guardsmen are going to get out of this. Especially with the Necron's tech as it is. Briars taking a good amount of last fire in the face. Very tanky lads. But already losing one model. Gomez <laughs> are round the back lines. As the commanders came out. Going to try and get a priest as soon as possible. I mean, this is quadruple destroyers. But centuple destroyers. We've got the great white barrier of... Of... I, I, I don't know. Oh, that, that's... Quite unusual artifacting um, bug going on there. Quite like that. I, while, while, while that was going on, the Imperial Guard, I assume, just gave up. It's a bit of a hopeless battle at the moment, to be honest, with all these destroyers. Not much the Guardsmen can really do. I think it would have benefited a lot, a hell of a lot, if he just got some upgrades and maybe saved his tech up into Tier 2 and 3 to the later stages of the game. And also, maybe one than, maybe more than one Plasma Generator might have helped as well. But still, very good play from both games. Um, if you fancy uh, supporting the channel, please do consider having a look at the old Patreon. It's £1 a month. It gives you one extra game a week. And it's all lovely and stuff. Anyway, my name's been Mr. Landshark. Pleasure as always. Never chop. And I will see you in a bit. Peace.